She was taken backstage to meet them all afterwards. She liked them very much. She thought they were funny and charming and witty and so on. She liked them. They liked her. One of them liked her in particular and asked her out and, and so on and so on. So that's how she ended up going out with Paul McCartney for several years. And one of the side effects of that was that, you know, she, he was, Paul was hanging around our house a lot all the time. And, and in the end, he was spending more time at our house than, than his own flat, because the Beatles did have a flat in London, but it was all four of them in one small flat, and of course it was rock and roll chaos. And I think Paul quite liked, quite apart from obviously his affection for my sister, but he also liked, I think, hanging around in more of an organized family environment. And eventually, our parents sort of took pity on him and invited him to, to stay. And, and he moved into the guest house, the top floor of our house, next to my bedroom. That's our old house at 57 Wimpole Street. And the top right-hand window is my bedroom where, with that ledge outside that, unaccountably, I used to sit on, evidently, at some times. It looks kind of dangerous. But right through there is my bedroom. And the other side of the house from that was Paul's bedroom. Where, so he, that's how he ended up sharing the, the top floor of the flat for about two years. Yeah, no, I, I, you asked me over actually one day, and it, was, it wasn't until I saw this photograph that I could work out where we actually were, because um, I hung out with, with uh, Paul and, and Peter in, his, in, in Paul's room, it was at the back. So there we are. Um, I also spent a happy evening putting the world to rights, and the world has improved ever since. <laughs> well, till recently. But, um, <laughs> Uh, we didn't see that coming, but, but <laughs> anyway, um, so one of the, the perks, of course, was that I would get to, I got, became very friendly with Paul, and, and also got to hear some songs, you know, as they got written, or shortly after they'd been written, I was never in on the writing process, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that for a minute, I wish, but, but um, I did hear some songs early on, and one of them was this song, World Without Love, and I said to Paul, that sounds good. And he said, well, actually, it's a song we've abandoned because John doesn't like it. John doesn't think it's right for the Beatles and we're not going to record it. And in fact, he hadn't finished it. He'd written a couple of verses, but it had no bridge or anything. So while all this was going on, um, Gordon and I, by this time, we, we were still at school, I think. Then, or, no, I was at university. At King's Club, Gordon was school, but we were playing this place you mentioned, the Pickwick Club, every night. And one night we were approached by an e an A and R guy from EMI Records who asked us to come and audition, and we did, and he signed us to EMI Records. So around that same time, we were looking for songs for our very first session. So when this happened and, and we got signed, I went back to Paul and said, "That song you played me, Well Without Love, the unfinished, rejected one." Is that still around? You know, is anyone doing it? And Paul said, no, I haven't finished it and no one's done it. I said, well, we've got ourselves a record deal now with EMI. Any chance we could try that song? Because I think it's very good. And um, he said, fine, you know, you, you can have it. You're welcome to, to do it. We're not definitely not doing it. So at that point, he very kindly wrote out for me the, the lyrics so that we could learn them. Um, you better believe the original of this piece of paper is safely locked in my safe at home in Malibu. So that when the music business goes completely to shit, I can run to Sotheby's as fast as my legs are carry me. It always gets a great laugh, of course, it's completely true. But um, anyway, in addition, uh, to ensure that we, we learned it correctly, both Paul and I had reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders in our bedroom at this point in time. That's in my bedroom, that's my little setup, and, and Paul had one in his room, which we would occasionally experiment with plugging them in together and trying overdubs and double tracking and stuff. But on this occasion, Paul sat at that machine um, and recorded a little demo of the song, as much of it as had been written at that point in time, so that we could learn it. And I thought you might be curious to hear the, the original version before we do our version. <laughs>
So that was the that was the original demo. And um, anyway, I did have to nag Paul a bit to to finish the song in time for our session because our first session was booked, we had musicians booked and everything. And we still we had a few songs ready to do, but not this one. So finally, I nagged Paul and he took his guitar and went into his bedroom for an infuriatingly short, like seven or eight minutes, and came out with this, this great bridge and wrote out the lyrics to that for me too. So went on the list for our first session. It was one of the songs we recorded. And by the end of the session, there was no doubt in anyone's mind but that that was gonna be our first single. It came out in the UK, went to number one, came out all over Europe, went to number one, everywhere, and finally, to our utter disbelief and, and joy, went to number one in America. It changed our lives forever, my life particularly forever, and Gordon and I celebrated accordingly. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I owe this song a great debt of gratitude, I continue to do so to this day. So we're gonna now do the, the Peter and Jeremy version, but before we do, I would tell you also that this is, makes a great sing-along song. And I would really like to end the evening with a gigantic sing-along. Now, some of you may be thinking, oh my God, this, this record was number one 54 years ago. Which means, of course, that any of you here who are old enough to remember it being number one are probably too old to remember much of anything, right? We are up here. <laughs> but, but in case the, the lyrics don't come drifting up to you through the mists of time. We do actually have a cheat sheet. Oh, I know this So I'm so confident. I know you're gonna be a great choir because you were great already on Lady Godiva. So I'm gonna leave the last verse of the song entirely to the Dakota singers. And, and uh, so I ask you to join with us. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat this evening. And to join with us as we end the show with the Peter and Jeremy version of World Without Love. Two, three, four. Please lock me away And don't allow the day Here inside Where I hide With my loneliness Very good. I don't care what they say I won't stay In a world without love 